Hey guys, this is James from TDB bringing you another in between episode. Uh, so today uh, we are doing the White Tea Club. Uh, Meat has been out of town. Uh, he went to India, uh, not to escape uh, the U.S., but just visiting family. He will be back. Um, so uh, he is not here to review this White to Tea Tea of the Month Club, uh, but he should be back. I'm hoping to bring him on for the uh, January box. So this is the December box. It got to me extremely late. It was held up in customs. I only received it recently. So I gave it some time to rest. And I am currently brewing out what you saw in the intro, which is a brick. It came without a wrapper, but it's supposedly from the Three Cranes factory. It is not poor. It is Lubao. Um, and Lubao, I think the closest cousin uh, for those of us that uh, know of white tea and Yunnan sourcing is uh, ripe poor. So there's a wet piling process. It's a little bit different from uh, Pur. Uh, it, the place where Lubao is grown also has the small leaf varietal, so it tends to be a little bit different, but probably the most familiar and the most uh, easiest way for us to conceptualize it, us Pur people, um, is to think of it uh, kind of like the uh, uh, a cousin to ripe Pur. Um, so here we are. I've already brewed up one and uh, drank it. I have infusion two right here and infusion three over here. The brick itself is decently compressed. So it takes a little bit of, uh, usually I'll press it a little bit harder there. Um, and uh, yeah, let's, let's uh, drink this tea guys. Cheers. Smooth, soft, it's thick. It's got a good body to it. There's some fruit there. Um, Lubal is, uh, in my research has been sort of known for its uh, beetle nut uh, taste and uh, there's definitely some of that sort of nuttiness there. I don't exactly know what a beetle nut is but uh, I could imagine it being sort of like this uh, if I'm being 100% honest. There's definitely some nuttiness to it. It has a really thick and smooth consistency to it. Mm. Uh, really nice. This this steep is nicer than the first one where it, the leaves were just sort of starting to come apart. And here is steep number three. Uh, yeah, so this club was one of the ones where we got quite a good quantity of tea. Um, I enjoyed my initial session with this brick and I am enjoying this one so far. So I'm making steep number four. And so right now, you guys can't totally see, but the leaves have totally um, uh, sort of uh, expanded to take up the whole Shibo. Uh, in my, I, I have limited experience with Lubel. I probably brewed, you know, 15 to 20 different ones. And I probably only had, I mean, compared to poor, I should say, that I, I don't drink it that often. Um, but I've had uh, recommended to me to use stronger parameters, even than ripe poor. Um, as you can really push these things and get really strong, uh, nice brews out of it if you use a lot of leaf and, uh, and you just sort of push the extents of the leaves. So uh, that's what I'm kind of doing here. Normally in this device I'd use 5 grams. I'm using about 5.5. I actually used 6 grams for my initial session and I enjoyed that plenty. You do have to be careful, as I'm sure you can overbrew it and it could become very nasty, I'm sure, especially with more recently pressed Lubau's. Uh, I'm not familiar enough with the Three Cranes Factory to know if this is like characteristic of them or, or how their other productions are. Uh, some quick Googling showed that Yunnan Sourcing had a few of their teas. You could probably find some of them um, in Taobao or AliExpress, I'd imagine, as well. Most of it's quite reasonably priced, uh, even compared to Ripe Poor, so sort of sitting in that very uh, under 10 cents a gram price range. So, um, yeah, cheers, guys. Mm. Thicker, uh, that nuttiness continues. Um, still very smooth. There's more creaminess in this infusion. Mm. The initial one, the initial infusion I had had more fruits. It's moved away from that and more into this sort of nutty, creamy category of tea. It's actually a really great um, wintertime brew. I am enjoying this tea, but we have a lot of teas to cover and. There's a lot of this brick, so uh, I think this will be my final infusion. 
Um, let's take a quick smell of this as well. There's a lot of sticks in this lube out. I found that to be typical for a lot of HIs. These are not your um, rich person's drink necessarily, but they're a very comfortable, easy to drink. I'd imagine this is a very forgiving brew. Uh, if you want to either grandpa brew it or just, just toss them into a big old pot and brew it uh, throughout the day. Uh, so pretty forgiving. You definitely don't need to do it this way. Uh, it hasn't gotten nasty at all. Uh, so it's pretty clean. It's from 2010. So it's had, um, I guess, seven years for that sort of uh, pile taste to go away. So it's it's definitely at a nice place where it is nice to drink. Cheers, guys. So similar to the last infusion, um, it's got, you know, just a really nice viscous body to it. Uh, it's not an overly complex tea, but it's a tea that I think would be very casually enjoyable um, to a lot of people. Not terribly sweet. If you want it to be more um, like sort of sticky, sweet, I'd imagine dialing down the parameters a little bit could accomplish that. Mm. And continues to be nutty. This doesn't have like a ton of like the crazy depth or or energy that something like a raw pour would have. It does. I don't have like throatiness or anything like that or or somatic feelings going on throughout the body. But it is a very nice warm brew. I'm starting to feel uh, a lot of heat within me. So um, definitely uh, like it. I don't know if this tea is available for sale. It came in the club box. I don't think it showed up on the white tea catalog. You could email him if you are indeed interested. Or just, you know, check out the different categories of Lu Bao. Uh, there's a lot of people that sell them, Chao Wong Shop, you know, and sourcing. Uh, I'm not sure if White Tea currently sells any, but uh, I do enjoy this tea. Um, so we are going to move on. Uh, we're just going to be covering this and the hot brandy for this uh, for this uh, set of uh, White Tea Club. Is the second part of this in between episode. Uh, we are now drinking. Uh, the hot brandy from white tea. So this is a experimental production, uh, supposedly. It's supposedly a bit of a pet project. Uh, this is according to the info sheet for Paul or uh, for Two Dog uh, of white tea. Um, and uh, this tea can be immediately noted. It's very fragrant. It is a caked mixture of white and black tea, and it's actually sold very affordably at twenty five dollars for a two hundred gram bing. Um, so that's uh, between 12 and 13 cents per gram. I have had the first steep, I've had this once before, and uh, with as many things experimental, it's probably going to take getting used to, but we are going to give this uh, as much of a shot as we can. So second and third infusion right in front of me. It's pretty smooth, it's soft, it's uh, it's decently thick. The sweetness of it is kind of a mix between the two of them. Uh, it's difficult to describe, it sort of has some of that corn sweetness that you can get from a lot of Yunnan blacks and stuff like that. Um, but it also has some of that interesting texture, sort of like a Silk texture, sometimes I get that from white teas and sometimes I also get that from uh, red teas or black teas. So very sweet, um, sweet immediately. Um, and I think it's sort of lingering, sort of like that corn sweetness. So it reminds me a lot of a black tea right now, I would say. Um, and the color, as I will show you guys in just a second, is sort of this orange liqueur. And I'm using, I wasn't sure what parameters to use for this. It says it could be boiled and stuff, uh, which leads me to believe it's a decently robust tea. Uh, but it brews up this sort of um, orange color, as you can see from here. And uh, cheers, guys. A little bit thinner this time. A little bit more of that soft silkiness is coming out uh, from the white tea. 
Uh, curiously, it is warming me up. I'm not really sure. Uh, yeah, I, I, so I guess I'm fairly warm in general. Um, looking at the leaves. Uh, so yeah, it's a mix. The, the white leaves are not, it, this is definitely not your silver needle or anything like that. These are more robust uh, sorts of leaves, and I should have looked at what type of leaves these are before, if they're Shomei or, uh, or Baimudan. I'm not totally sure. I'm by far no white tea expert. I'd say it smells closer to a white than a black tea. I'm not sure exactly what the, uh, if this is a 50-50. I don't think it's a 50-50. Uh, it's probably, I guess, maybe more white tea than black tea. I'm not totally sure. So the body softened a little bit, a little bit thinner in taste, but also a good mouth feel and texture. Um, and yeah, this this tea, we'll get some getting used to, and I, I think it probably would be a pretty friendly tea for people. Uh, I'm not sure if, for people that are more interested in oolongs or white teas or black teas and stuff like that. I think it would fit a lot of people uh, as alley right there because it, it does have a lot of fragrance and stuff that is like immediate and pretty obvious to take in. The tea itself will probably take a few repetitions. Uh, so buying a twenty-five dollar two hundred gram cake, which Process me as a very reasonable price um, seems to be an okay option, I would say. Um, but let's drink this. So steep number four, guys. A bit of tannins in this one, actually. Uh, a slight bit of astringency. The body has sort of thickened back up again. I'm getting hints of sort of fruits, uh, yeah, like dry fruits. Uh, sometimes I get that for some of these uh, more robust white teas. Uh, so interesting, it's, it's changed somewhat uh, steep to steep. There's a bit of sweetness at the back of the throat, still mainly at the front of the mouth. And yeah, uh, I think this tea will take some getting used to, but uh, considering a sample of 25 grams of this is $3.30, it's really uh, so cheap that uh, you can uh, try it out uh, with a sample or with a full cake if you don't like it. I think it's easy enough to uh, either chalk it or, or send it to a friend that might appreciate it a bit more. I think it's interesting. I, th I, I think I need more time with this tea to fully figure it out. Uh, it's not every day that you're tasting a blend of white tea and black tea. So I think it definitely uh, takes some getting used to, as I've said a few times. Um, but uh, that concludes this episode of uh, the White to Tea December Club. Uh, I'm filming this in almost February because it took so long to get here. Um, but, uh, so thank you to Two Dog for these teas and, uh, I will see you guys next time.